Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to design plant foundations in STAD Foundation Advanced. In this training video, we will be focusing on the STAD Foundation Advanced plant mode. The plant foundation mode is used to model, analyze, and design foundations for tanks and pressure vessels. This mode features the ability to automatically generate wind and seismic loads and consider different loading conditions such as the empty condition, the operating condition, and a testing condition for supported tanks and pressure vessels. Over the next series of videos, we will show you the complete workflow for designing vertical vessel foundations and drilled pier foundations in the STAD Foundation Advanced plant mode. We will now begin by launching STAD Foundation Advanced from your desktop icon. Once STAD Foundation Advanced opens, you will be shown the STAD Foundation Advanced start page. And if I expand this area, we can see the modes that we can enter. We can enter our general mode, which is used to design a full foundation plan that might include matte foundations, isolated footings, combined foundations, or pile cap foundations. We could enter the plant mode, which is where we'll be spending our time today, or the toolkit mode. We'll go ahead and enter the plant foundation mode, which is used to design your vertical vessels or your drilled and driven piers. After in our plant foundation mode, I'm going to expand this project information group, and here I can see all of the foundation types I can create within this mode. Now before we create any new foundation types, we're going to go ahead and save our model. So we'll go up to a ribbon and in the Home tab, we'll click Save As. We'll just call this Plant. We'll save it to our desktop for today and then we'll click Save. In this video, you will learn the complete workflow for designing vertical vessel foundations in STAD Foundation Advanced. This will include the process of defining the vessel geometry, entering the loading information, specifying the design parameters, and then finally designing the vertical vessel foundation. In the plant foundation mode, the design may be a trial and error process, meaning that after you design your vessel, you may have to go back and edit your vessel geometry if any code checks or standards are not passing, and then we'll show you how to review your finalized design and schedule drawings. In this video, we'll show you how to create a vertical vessel foundation. In order to do that, our first step is to go over to our main navigator pane in the plant foundation mode and click on the Create Vertical Vessel Foundation link. Once we enter this area, we'll be immediately sent to the Data Input Wizard, which is basically a series of dialogues designed to help walk you through the process of modeling your vertical vessel foundation, including setting up all your geometry, loading, and design parameters. The first thing we need to enter is our vertical vessel job information. We're going to select our unit system for English for this training and the design code of US. We're going to enter a code version of the ACI 318.11. After we enter all of our information on this page, we're just going to click Next, which will basically just walk us through this entire process. On the next page, we're going to be asked to enter the geometry information for this foundation. We're going to enter our unit system as inches. And then we're going to select our foundation type. Now, STAD Foundation Advanced can design octagonal foundations or square foundations. And then I, they can either be soil supported or pile cap foundations for vertical vessels. We're going to select an octagonal foundation and it's going to be soil supported. Then we need to enter our geometry for our actual foundation. So we're going to enter all of this information here. And if you refer to the left hand side of this page in the data input wizard, we can see what all these variables mean, which might assist you in entering the correct geometry information. For our effective diameter, we're going to enter 60 inches 
and our effective height is going to be 360 inches. Our pedestal geometry, we're going to start with 84 inches and a thickness of 36 inches. Our bottom of footing elevation will be 126 inches. Next we're going to enter our footing geometry. For our diameter we'll enter a minimum of 108 inches with a maximum of 190. Our footing dimension increment will leave that set to the default of 1.992 and then our height for minimum will do 30 inches and a maximum of 54. The depth to the water table will be 240 inches and a soil depth of 12 inches. Once we've entered all of our geometry information, we're ready to move on to our anchor bolt geometry. And to do that, we'll just click on this next button. To enter our anchor bolt geometry, we'll first specify our unit. We're going to go ahead and select inches. Our bolt circle diameter will be 72 inches. And again, Stat Foundation Advance has given us a nice graphic over here to help us determine what our appropriate variables should be. The number of anchor bolts will enter as 24. A bolt diameter, the diameter of the bolts, will be 1 inch. A sleeve diameter will do 2 inches. And an anchor bolt effective embedment depth will go ahead and select 18 inches. Now again, the design process for any of these plant foundations may be an iterative process, meaning that we'll have to specify some parameters in the beginning. And then depending upon the design, we may need to go back and adjust some of them to ensure a passing design. After we enter the anchor bolt geometry, we'll go ahead and again click Next. Next, we're going to enter our primary load information, which are basically all of the loads that other than wind and seismic. And here you'll notice that we can enter um, some user-defined loads down here, and then also loads that define the empty loads, operating condition, test, and erection loads, if applicable to your particular model. The first thing we're going to do is enter our unit information. So for our vertical load, we'll enter that in kips. For our base shear, again, we'll select kips. And then for our base moment, we'll do kip feet. And then all the rest of the loads will be entered according to this unit system. For our vertical or axial force for the empty condition, we will assume negative 12 kips. And of course, we could see over here that a negative load indicates a downward acting load. We can enter our operating load. We'll enter negative 65 kips. And then we'll also enter a test load of negative 73 kips. And of course, we can enter a base shear and a base moment, and also any user-defined loads that we need for this particular model. Then I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And here I'm going to be asked to generate my wind loads. Now, you can either specify wind loads directly using this user-defined wind load radio button, or you can use Stat Foundation Advanced to calculate your wind load pressures according to the ASCE 7 which is what we'll go ahead and do for this training. So we'll enter, say, calculated wind load. We will enter our basic wind speed. We'll do 90 miles per hour. And of course, we want to get this information directly out of our local building code. Our KD factor will enter at 0 0.95. Now, for some of these factors over here, you're going to see a button right adjacent to it. So if I go ahead and click this button, what it'll do is give me a preview of what that table is. I can select the value I want and then go ahead and click OK and it'll update this field for me. We also give you some additional information regarding all of these parameters over here, including the code sections that you can find these relevant parameters in. Next, we're going to enter our KZ factor. We'll select Exposure C, Case 2. We'll enter our topographic factor of 1.0 for this training. And an importance factor, let's go ahead and select Table 6.1. and we'll go ahead and select case two. And here we can see that it updated the field for me. For our gust factor, we'll enter 0 0.85. And our CF factor, we will enter as 0 0.8. Once we have completed entering all of our wind load information, we can go ahead and click on the next button. And then we could enter our time period calculation. Now this is used to calculate the wind load and size 
McLeod calculations according to the ASCE 705. For this training, we're going to go ahead and say direct input for the time period calculation. We're going to enter a fundamental period of 0 seconds and a longed period transition period of 8 seconds. After we enter all of our time period calculations, we'll go ahead and click Next to enter our seismic loads. Now this is used to input our seismic loads and we could do that either directly over on this side of the table or we can specify the parameters that the program will then use to calculate code specified seismic loads which is what we'll do in this training today. So we'll go ahead and say user defined CG. This turns this side of the dialog active for us and we can enter our center of gravity from the vessel bottom. We'll enter that as 200 inches and then we can enter our seismic information. Now we could do this one of two ways. We can look up all the values for us manually and enter them in here or we can select using a zip code. We'll go ahead and enter the values manually and of course we'd want to confer with our local building code for this information. And we could enter our S1 factor and our SS factor. So we'll do 0 0.145 for the S1 and for our SS we'll do 0 0.322. We can enter our site class and we'll select site class C. And you can see that our FA and FV have been calculated using this information. Lastly, we can enter our response modification factor. We'll enter that at 2.0 and our importance factor we'll enter at 1.5. After we have completed entering our seismic load information, we can go ahead and click Next, and then we have a chance to review our load combination generation that's going to exist for this particular model. And we can update our tables if we need to, but these are the standard tables that come with STAT Foundation Advance. The first thing we're going to do on this table is go ahead and select our load combination template. We're going to select the ASCE 705. We have an opportunity to review all of the load combinations it's going to generate for our service loads and also our ultimate load combinations. Once we're satisfied with all of our load combinations, we can again just go ahead and click Next. The last piece of information we must specify through our data input wizard for our vertical vessel foundation is our design parameters. Here we'll enter all of our material density properties, including our water density, our concrete density and our soil density, and we can tell the program whether or not to consider buoyancy. Next we'll enter our bearing and stability factors. Here we can enter our allowable bearing pressure, our minimum stability overturning ratio, and for sliding ratio, and we can also enter our coefficient of friction. Lastly we'll enter our concrete design parameters here we can enter our concrete compressive strength, our cover requirements, and our yield strength for steel. We can have some control over the bar sizes that Stat Foundation Advance chooses in order to design this foundation. And we'll go with a minimum bar size of 4 for this training with a maximum of 9. Next we can enter our bar spacing information, so we'll go with a minimum of 3 inches with a maximum of 12. After we are done entering our design parameters, we can see that we can just click Next, and then our foundation will be completely modeled in STAT Foundation Advanced. Before we design, we'll also go ahead and just save this model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.